Do we start? Okay. So, well, the floor is yours. Hello. Can we, can we start? Okay, so it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Matteo, for the invitation, and thanks to ICTP and so on. And it's a pleasure to lecture uh, to such a variety of uh, people and from everywhere, from all. Uh, but I, I guess everybody is physicist or well, but there is somebody from computer science. But my course will be, I mean, it's the physics of information, and uh, in particular, the the thermodynamic consequences of information. So, uh, yeah, I'm Juan Parrondo from Spain, and uh, Lia will be uh, from ICTP. Uh, she already introduced herself. Uh, she will be the teacher assistant or the assistant for the exercises and so on, and also we lecture probably one of the, of the lessons as well. This is the outline uh, of, the, um, of the talk. The, the, uh, what, why we are studying this, uh, this topic, why we are studying the, the connection between thermodynamics and information, mainly because even at the beginning of thermodynamics, so in the 19th century, in 1865, uh, one of the fathers of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, which is uh, Maxwell, this is Maxwell, already realized that thermodynamics has a uh, that the laws of thermodynamics depend on the information that we have our, about the system. And he illustrated this with something called the Maxwell demon. It's something that uh, Kelvin uh, put that name to the idea, to the original idea of Maxwell. So um, the course, uh, so because of this idea of the Maxwell demon, this was 1865. And during the 19th century, and during the 20th century, and during the 21st century, we are studying this idea of Maxwell, the Maxwell demon. And, and, and studying this idea means studying the relationship between thermodynamics and information. And now it's, I would say, a branch of thermodynamics by itself. And uh, we usually call it thermodynamics of information. And this is the, 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 what we are going to study in this course. This is the outline, it's a little bit ambitious, so I don't know if we will be able to cover everything. Um, you have these slides now in the, in the website of the course, and right before coming here, we sent also a, a, uh, some exercises, a collection of exercises uh, that are corresponding to each of the, of the, um, the lessons. So we have 10 lessons for more or less one per day, although some of them are, 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 are shorter. So, um, and these exercises, the exam, somebody were uh, worried about the exam. The exam will be mm, a, a simplified version of this exercise. Of course, different exercises, but the, more or less, if you are able to do the exercises and so on, uh, you will pass the exam without any problem. So. Um, so the idea is that you get the exercises, which is a PDF, and then uh, um, you can solve it during the afternoon. Or uh, I will be here the whole day, no, because I live here and <laughs> we cannot escape. So uh, I will be. I, from now on, my, my my office is in UN room, which is there. So you can go from I don't know the whole afternoon, and Leah will be here around. So we will be the afternoon here. So you can do the, try the exercise. Of, of course, I encourage you to try the exercise by yourself. This is the only way to learn, and to uh, this is the only way to learn or to check whether you have learned or not. Because sometimes you think you understand something, and then when you uh, try to do the exercises, you see that. Uh, not so easy. So um, I encourage you to do the exercises. And, um, and on, like, the plan is that on Friday, we will have a session in the afternoon. Well, you will have a session with Leah to solve the exercises. Uh, some people can't solve it here or whatever. And the rest of the afternoons, you, we, we are available. I mean, you can ask 
uh, questions to us, but we will not have an official session, let's say. This is, uh, this is the plan. If you want to change it, we can, we can try. So let's start. Uh, the, the, the lesson today is just an introduction to the subject, but it's an introduction where we are going to review, let's say, this, the history of Maxwell Demon from 1865, from 19th century, to the 70s of the last century, so to, to the 1917, 1970 more or less, where uh, people like Charles Bennett and uh, Rolf Landauer um, introduced new ideas into the problem. And uh, so it, it is going to be today just um, uh, a, a bit of history, it's a kind of historical uh, presentation of the topic but with this presentation, you already have a lot of ingredients to, to think and to work on the, on the problem of, of, the, of thermodynamics and information. So you will see that the, the, the exercises are like four pages, but the first page is just lesson one. So with the, with the tools that we are going to study in this session, you, can, you will be able to, to do a lot of things uh, uh, on on, on the topic. And the rest of the, the rest is, is going to be, the rest of the course is going to be a more uh, mm, uh, method, I mean, uh, 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 some uh, mathematical tools to deal with the problem. Lesson two is information theory, because if we are going to study the link between information and thermodynamics. We need information theory, so maybe you have here about Shannon information, mutual information, all these concepts. We are going to study this in detail tomorrow. And third, the third day is basing basic concepts of thermodynamics. Well, I guess most of you have studied the course on thermodynamics, but there are new results, especially on non-equilibrium thermodynamics. And, uh, and uh, this actually, for many of you here, this third lesson, stochastic thermodynamics, is useful by itself because it's, uh, we will try to give you an introduction on how to deal with uh, thermodynamics of small systems, which is something that you will study maybe in other courses like the biophysics and so on. And then uh, these uh, four, five, six, seven is the core of the course, uh, which is... Um, how information and, uh, and thermodynamics are related. And uh, sorry, there is a change here. Information flow, I changed it in the outline. I, th I think Monica uploaded the outline of the course or not. It, is, uh, it should be an outline, a PDF with the, and some uh, bibliography, some uh, references, this one, yeah. So in the, the outline is, is already, um, uh, um, the, the new version, but I forgot to, to change it here. So information flows, which is not now something that people is using a lot to understand uh, small machines, Brownian machines and things like that, and, and, and molecular machines. This 10 goes in, in eight, and creating information and Maxwell Demons in the phase space, which is a, a little bit more advanced, will be the last two lessons, and I'm not sure if we will be able to cover them or not, but uh, the plan is, to cover everything, so let's, let's see. Of course, you can interrupt me whenever you like, and so on. So uh, let's start with um, the first lesson, which is why we are studying these things, and, uh, and uh, the reason is this uh, idea by Maxwell. Um, most of this history that I'm going to tell you, this is a, the Maxwell demon is, let's put some, some dates, this is 1865, just after, uh, in, in 18, or 1867, 1867, sorry. In 1865, Maxwell discovered something very important for, the, for statistical mechanics, which is, anybody can guess, what is uh, the first thing you study about the statistics of, uh, uh, the Maxwell distribution of, of velocities that uh, there are, uh, that the temperature uh, is related with the average kinetic energy. But there are 
in a gas, there are some very slow particles and there are very fast particles. And this is what, uh, what made uh, Maxwell think that if some uh, being, some agent could uh, order the particles, the fast ones in one side and the slow ones in another side, then this agent could defeat the second law of thermodynamics. And uh, this is 1867. CIDAR engine, which is probably the most important modification of the Maxwell demon, is 1912. And, uh, and then uh, you see the, the really uh, uh, important points uh, in this his history are really, so 65, 1912, this is uh, more or less half a century. And then we had to wait <laughs> another half a century until 1970 for uh, uh, Landauer and Bennett to add a new aspect or a new idea to this problem of the, of the thermodynamic of information of the Maxwell gene. And, uh, and now in the, 12, tw uh, in the 21st uh, century, like two, in 205 and 210, sorry, 2005, 2010, People like uh, Takahiro Sagawa, like me, like Jordan Horowitz came and added a new uh, way of looking at this. So it is a, a history of uh, where the biggest steps are in, in each, uh, like separated by half a century, more or less. Well, our, our contribution is not the biggest step, but it was the formalization of everything. Sometimes what I said is that what we are doing in now people working on thermodynamics of information is to, to understand Bennett's. Ben, Bennett is the big guy in this, all this business. And, uh, and what we are trying to do is to understand what he did and, and trying to formalize what he did in a more uh, um, systematic way. So, um, and uh, also something that uh, happened in the last 10, 20 years is that we can uh, manipulate nanoparticles and microparticles and uh, we can uh, uh, manipulate the small systems and this means that we can, uh, we can uh, have experimental realizations of the Maxwell Dima. And uh, if you are really inter interested in this his history, uh, uh, there is this book, this is a classical book, this is the second edition which is, uh, mu is, is much uh, uh, larger than the first edition. And, and it's a, a collection of papers on the Maxwell demon uh, collected by Leff and Rex, uh, those two, two physicists. Um, and this is a very popular book. Uh, and in, here in the cover you see Maxwell and the demon here. Okay, so what is the Maxwell demon? As I said, this goes back to 1867. This, the first uh, uh, time that this idea appeared was in a letter from Maxwell to a friend. The friend is called Tate. And then in, I think in, in, in 1872, he published this in a book, in a very important book by Maxwell, which is The Theory of Gases or something like that. So, and, and the idea is this one, I don't know if you can read here, is that um, actually the story is that uh, Tate, um, wrote a book on thermodynamics. Thermodynamics was really something that uh, had a very, I mean, Carnot's book is 1822, but it is uh, the, the formalization of uh, thermodynamics is, is in the middle of the 19th century. So, uh, so uh, uh, Tite uh, wrote to Maxwell a letter. Uh, no, he sent the book and, and asked Maxwell for comments on, on the book. Uh, and then, uh, this is the style of Maxwell that uh, he said, well, I cannot tell you too much about the book because, well, Tate was interested on, on the uh, uh, authorship of different results because he, he didn't want to, to be mad with, uh, with uh, Clausius, which was not very, <laughs> very nice, and, and people like that. So he asked Maxwell for the authorship of different results, but he, he said, I cannot tell you too much about that. But I can tell you some, uh, some holes. A hole means that some flaws or some, uh, 
and, and to pick a hole is, is just like a, well, just an example of uh, the problems of thermodynamics. To pick a hole, um, and he presents the idea of the, of the Maxwell demon. The second law at that time, there are many formulations of the second law, but the, one of the most basic formulations is that if two things are in contact, the hotter cannot take heat from the cool, colder. Actually, this is the, this is, let's say, the historically the first formulation of the second law, which is in Carnot's uh, uh, book, uh, actually, in 1922. This is the idea that to, actually, to, to, to build thermodynamics, this is the only thing you need. You need some basic irreversible process. And the basic, probably the most basic irreversible process is that hot, that, that heat flows from hot things to cold things to reach equilibrium. So, uh, and the nice thing of the Miami is that just picking one of these uh, irreversible processes, you can construct the whole Miami. Anyway, this is uh, one uh, formulation of the second law. Uh, hot heat flows from hot to cold, you know, uh, without, if, if there is no external agency. Of course, air conditioning and uh, heat pumps are a uh, counter example, but we need energy. So this is the second law tells you that spontaneously heat flows from hot to cold. And if you want to revert this flow, you need to put energy into the system, okay, like air conditioning. And then he comes with uh, this idea uh, that um, let's, let's have two, 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 uh, a gas in a container separated by a wall, and the wall has a, a gate or a door, and there is a finite being who knows uh, and that can operate the, 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 the wall. And uh, he can also uh, observe the paths and the velocities of all the molecules. Then what he has to do is to, if, if, uh, if a fast molecule from the, uh, the left Tries comes to the wall, he opens a wall. And if a slow molecule from the right comes to the, wall, to the gate, he opens the gate. So he allows, with this uh, uh, observation and this operation, he uh, allows fast particles to go from left to right and slow particles to go from right to left. So he's... Uh, with this operation, he is transferring energy from the cold to the hot. So you can say, ah, but uh, um, you need some energy to operate the wall. But in principle, the wall should could be uh, as small as as little mass as you like. And in principle, there is no uh, fundamental bound to make this operation. So the demon can. This is the demon. He, uh, Maxwell didn't call it a demon, but uh, he called it uh, a, a, an intelligent, very observant, and neat fingered being. And then Kelvin called him uh, a demon after that. So the demon can defeat the second law of thermodynamics. The demon can create a, a, a air conditioning for free. And of course, once you create a gradient of temperature, you can also make an engine. So you can have uh, energy for free, not energy for free, because you need to take it from a thermal bath, but you can have a perpetuum mobile of, of the second kind, which is a perpetuum mobile of the second, of the first kind is a perpetuum mobile that can create energy. A perpetuum mobile of the second kind is a, is a, is a motor that can take energy from instant from the air. Here in the air, there is a lot of energy. Why cannot we extract this energy and create, uh, we could solve the problem of energy in the world by taking energy from the air. Why cannot we do it? Because this energy, um, uh, we cannot e extract energy from a single thermal path. And this is one of the, of the, of the statements of the, of the second law of thermodynamics. So this demon, could, in principle, uh, defeat the second law, but using information. So immediately people started to think, ah, this guy 
this uh, daemon needs uh, information. And to gather this information, maybe there is a requirement of energy. External, I did I say external aid? Uh, ah, without, well, this is the language of, of Maxwell in, 19, in 1967. External aid agency here means external work, I would say, external, some, some, uh, some energy. But this is the, because of course this being is an external agency, this is what you mean, or that, uh, uh, external agency means uh, work. Actually, look at the at the at the conclusion. The hot system got hotter and the cold colder, and yet no work has been done. Only the intelligence of a very observant and neat figured being has employed. It's amazing how uh, in this single sentence, uh, Maxwell. Uh, 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 precisely uh, de describe the problem. And the problem is first intelligence, because many people started to think, ah, intelligence is necessary here, it's not necessary, and so on. Second, observant information, you need to measure, you need to, uh, to uh, gather information from the system. And, second, and third, need finger, operationally, you can operate, you can manipulate uh, things of the size of uh, of, uh, of molecules or uh, like. okay. So I guess you have seen this story before, no? In in courses of thermodynamics and so on. Yeah. Yeah. This is the story. The story, of course. Uh, uh, went in these directions. First, people thought, wow, you have to open the door and close the door. And who, who knows if this is a... They, we, we will see that this is not... Um, of course, uh, what the, the important thing is that this does not impose a fundamental bound to the world that you have. You can do, you can, you can, medium, you can make this work as little as you like. This is the this is the point, and this is uh, why you can defeat the second law. We will go back to this in the next version of the of the Maxwell. I cannot hear. Yeah. No, no, no. The idea is that if the system is closed, and in principle. Of course, this is the problem. The, pro the, the whole thing is closed. And of course, uh, what, what Maxwell showed is that in principle, the entropy production of this closed system is negative. This is what we said that is defeating the second law. No, no, no. But you are, you are assuming that the second law is true. And we are in 1865. And people didn't know that the second law was true. So you cannot use the second law to prove the second law. You cannot assume that the entropy production is, should be positive. No. You are trying, you are putting into question the second law. So you cannot assume the second law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but again, you are assuming that the second law is true. Here, we have to put into question the second law. So we cannot use the second law. You cannot use the fact that the entropy is positive or something like that, because otherwise there is no problem, of course. I mean, if you believe the second law, this, you can leave the room. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can uh, uh, there is no point of this course. I mean, the, the course, of, of course, in mind we have, like, like the, uh, the Simpsons, we say in this house, we respect the second law, but of course, uh, we have in mind that, uh, that, that the second law is, should be restored, but we have to explain it. And to explain why the second law is compatible with this, we cannot use the second law. We have to really work to 
to understand the problem, okay? Okay, so um, there are other versions. Um, the, the, the one that uh, the original Maxwell demon is this one, is the, the, the fact that you can transfer energy from cold to hot. There is one much simpler, which is called the pressure Maxwell demon. Imagine that the demon just lets let particle from the left from the uh, left move to the right and not the other way around. Then you deplete this half of the container and you accumulate particles in this uh, part of the container. By doing so, and this is much simpler, this is just open the door when, when a particle comes here and so on. And um, by doing so, you create a gradient of pressure. The pressure here is much bigger than here, so you can use this also to create uh, with a piston, you can create work and so on. And then you defeat the second law as well. No? So, uh, and, and this is, this is uh, surprising. I mean, this is surprising. One could think that for that, because here you need some kind of, uh, of uh, processing information. And you need, ah, this particle is fast. It comes from the left. And then this particle is slow and so on. You have to infer, should I open or close? For this, it's, it's just so simple that you just open when something comes here. You, you, or if, if you can say, you let only particles to move in this direction and not in this direction. And this is what a valve does in, a, I mean, in, many, uh, in many engineers. You know, we have a diode. A diode is, is what a diode does for electrons. So it allows in one direction and in, in, not in the other direction. So for this pa part of, um, for this version of the Maxwell demon, one could think that there are a lot of uh, automatic devices that uh, do this, this, this job, no? And, um, and actually, for instance, Feynman, in his lectures, uh, uh, already discussed uh, uh, something called automatic Maxwell demons, which is essentially a valve, something that can only allow particles in one direction or allow things to move in one direction. And this is a project, but we are not going to work on that. Maybe, maybe on Wednesday we will discuss something about this. Actually, this is amazing that doesn't work. Uh, why, that, why a valve doesn't work? Well, let me just yeah, explain a bit here. Uh, when you have a valve or a, or, or a door that can only open in one, in one direction, think of a, of, of a door that can open in one direction. This could, be, this could be something like that with a spring here. And um, because you need to close the door. No? Uh, well, no, no, like that, like that. So you need to close the door because well, you can think of a door that can open only in one direction, but uh, the, when the door is opened, something can come. So the idea is that only particles can move from left to right. And, and when, when one particle tries to move like that, it closes the door. You could think of this. Why this doesn't work? Well, uh, Feynman showed that this doesn't work in another context, but similar to this one because this should be so tiny to allow particles to move from left to right that it should be subject to thermal fluctuations as well as particles. So this is like another particle. This is, this is a single degree of freedom which uh, suffers, I mean, which uh, uh, undergoes fluctuations exactly as a Brownian uh, particle so, or as a molecule. So it should be so tiny that uh, it, should, it would have fluctuations by itself. And then uh, it will allow, it, it, it will not exhibit this asymmetric behavior. Yeah. It will, any, there will be the same probability to go from left to right than from right to left. And actually, uh, there is a fundamental reason for that, which is the reversibility of the Hamiltonian dynamics. Maybe we will go uh, to this in the last. Uh, 
Okay, so these are uh, two versions of the Maxwell demon. But most of the uh, history of Maxwell demon, most of the research on the Maxwell demon uh, uses a, a different version, which is the Sealer engine. Sealer has a tilde in the A. And the Sealer engine, uh, you will see it's, it's a little bit more difficult from, uh, especially for people doing statistical mechanics, but uh, it's much simpler, uh, especially it's because the demo has to do just a single measurement, and the single measurement is very simple. It's just one bit of information. And the, the, the Sealer engine is like a thermodynamic cycle, like the Carnot cycle, but uh, uh, it's much simpler. It's, it's, it's based on, uh, on a single, they call it a single particle, a single molecule gas. It's a gas with just one molecule. And it's in a box where the walls at, are at a temperature T. This is uh, not so easy to imagine or to imagine a simulation, but you can imagine that uh, you have a particle that moves freely, so it moves in a straight line and at constant velocity, but each time it, it collides with the walls, it thermalizes, which means that the outgoing velocity is a random variable and uh, it's uh, uh, distributed according to the Maxwell distribution. So uh, you have this uh, system. It's a, it's a single particle in a box at temperature T. And, and there is an external agent, there is a demon, who uh, does the following. First, uh, we insert, or the demon inserts a piston in the middle. For that, you don't need any work. It can be seen that um, it, this can be done without any work. If the particle is classical, in the quantum case, you need work. But this is a, a more, um, well, in the quantum case, at zero temperature, you need work, because essentially, because of the uncertainty principle, you are confining the particle in a smaller volume, and then the kinetic energy, because Heisenberg and uncertainty principle should increase. But in classical, uh, if, if the particle is classical, you don't need any work. Then uh, you measure where the particle is, and you implement an expansion. And if you have a gas, now suppose that this is a gas, or it's a single particle. You have a gas, and you expand the gas, you reversibly you get, you get an energy. You, get, you extract work. This is what the, the engines in our cars are doing all the day. They extract work in expansion. And then, once you uh, do this, uh, you remove the piston, and you have a cycle. And you have a cycle, uh, uh, you have a system in contact with a thermal bath, and, in con and there is an external agent which who manipulates the engine and can extract work. So uh, they, this is the diagram of the energy. This is the engine, the particle. This is the thermal bath, which is supplying energy to the system or absorbing energy to the system. This energy, the energy that a system exchanges with a thermal bath is called heat. So this is heat. And the energy that the system exchanges with the external agent is called work. And we will use this convention for the signs. Work, is, work and heat are positive if they go into the system. This is for the exercises. This is the, the, this, this, the convention. Unless we are uh, talking about extracted work, sometimes we, call, we, we, we talk about extracted work and it will be minus W. But W is usually always taken as the work that comes into the system. This is why the, the first law of thermodynamics is called, is um, written like that. Uh, this is for a system which is in contact with the thermal bath. And if Q is negative, the system is dissipating heat. If Q 
to is positive, the system is absorbing. And, uh, and this is the external agent. And the exchange of energy between the system and the external agent is work. And if the work is put, ah, oh, sorry. And this is the convention of science. This is a convention of, we could call, actually, the extracted work. With this convention of science, the extracted work is minus work. So now we can calculate these energy flows, these energy transfers. The piston. Uh, it could be, well, it's, yeah, it could be. It's not necessary. Uh, there are detailed simulations of this in, in some papers. And uh, it's, of course, it's, a prole it's problematic because you have the particle like that. And you have to implement a reversible expansion. If you remember from thermodynamics, a reversible expansion means that it must be quasi-static. So you must exert a pressure equal to the pressure of the gas. But here, the pressure of the gas is just kicks. So it's not so easy to imagine this. And actually, it has some problems, but I, I will address these problems in a moment. Yeah? You have a question? No. Ah, sorry. Um, so for, for now on, we can think of the particle as a single molecule gas. And, uh, and if you think of that, what is the extracted work? Well, you go to thermodynamics, and then uh, you find this equation, that this is the work when you move, uh, when you move a piston. No? The, the, the volume changes under some pressure, and the work is given by this integral. And now, if you use the, if you use the idea that uh, the, 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 the expansion is reversible, the pressure is given by the ideal gas equation with, with just one particle. Remember, the ideal gas equation is um, PV NKT. We write it in, in terms of the number of particles. If you write it in the, in the in terms of the number of moles is nRT, the R is the, the, the constant of gases, but uh, here is K is the, is the Boltzmann constant. And then uh, if you integrate this at constant temperature, you get KT log of the ratio between the final and the initial volume. This is okay, no? If, if we expand a system, we extract work. If we compress a, cyst, a gas, we have to put work into the system. So this is negative when, when we compress, and this is positive when we expand. And if you put the numbers here, if the, if the final volume, uh, sorry, the initial volume, the expansion is here, no? The initial, we are expanding from a volume uh, one half to a volume one, no? And this gives you kT log 2, which is bigger than 0. So we, we, this means that we are extracting work. And we are doing this in a cyclic process. This is, this is a, 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 a violation of the second law of thermodynamics, because we are extracting work. This is a perpetuum mobile of the second kind. We are extracting work in a cycle from a single thermal bath. And we can do this. Uh, 10 to the 23 and get a joule or whatever. K is very small, but uh, if, if we can, in principle, nothing prevents this to be repeated uh, many, many times, and then we could get macroscopic amount of energy. Macroscopic amount of energy. So this is, uh, this is uh, defeating the second law. So now we have the problem, you know, the problem of uh, uh, restoring this. It's the same. It's, it's the same problem as the original Maxwell demon. But why the CLR is so important? First, because the Maxwell demon is very complicated. The Maxwell demon must observe all the time, all the particles, and uh, it's not clear if he has to observe very far particles or very near particles and so on. And it's observing in a continuous, uh, continuous time. Here, the, the, the measurement, the observation is just a single measurement. 
Moreover, it's a measurement of left, right. It's a binary measurement with the same probability. So we know from information theory, tomorrow we will uh, we will uh, make this more precise. It's only one bit of information. So here is very clear the information involved in, this, in the process. And it's also very clear the energy that you can take in each in each cycle. So uh, uh, for one bit of information, you get kt log 2 uh, in, of work. Okay? Or if you like, here the entropy, uh, as you said before, the, what happens with the entropy of the universe? The entropy of the universe, if the demon has no effect on the, on the entropy, the entropy of the universe, look, this is the, the this is a cycle, so the entropy of the gas is constant. I mean, it's constant. It's a, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a six cycle, periodic, it's periodic. So the only thing that changes is the external agent has no entropy. By definition, external agent has no entropy. So the only entropy is the one by the thermal bath. The, the thermal bath is, is, is losing energy because where this energy comes from, why we can extract energy? Because we're extracting energy from the thermal bath. Eh? The particle in the expansion, the particle uh, uh, gives some energy to the piston and then re recovers, in average, this energy when it collides with the, part, with the, with the thermal bath, with the, with the particles, at the, with the walls at temperature T. So here, uh, 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 if you like, in the Cilar, ener in the Cilar engine, the uh, 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 the the change of entropy in the bath in one cycle is just q divided by t with a minus. So in this case, uh, q q is uh, is positive. So the thermal bath is giving energy. So uh, this is k t log two. This log is natural log. And the delta of the system is zero in a cycle. So delta of the universe is minus scale of two. So apparently, this whole setup uh, decreases the entropy of the universe contradiction with the second law. So we have to solve this. This is a problem, no? We have to solve. We can say, ah, this is possible, no? We could maybe in two centuries or in two millennia build this thing, and then we could defeat the second law. This is a, one option. That's secretly most many people think. <laughs> and the second option is to say, ah, no, this is impossible. Yeah. We have to respect the second law in this house. We respect the second law. So, uh, uh, um, so there must be something inherent. Some, but, but look, it must be something fundamental. It cannot be something like ah, the piston has some weight, and the, no, it must be something that restore the KT log two in, in in a fundamental way. So, um, so then people started to think, what can be what restores the second law? And um, uh, most of the people until 1970 thought that the problem is in the measurement. So to measure, not so much on the, on the operation. The operation is easy to, to, to show that that's not uh, uh, requires any work. So people thought, no, this is in the measurement. And people like Leo Brioin and more uh, tried to, uh, try to uh, find a minimal uh, work needed to measure something, okay? But really to find a, a fundamental a bound of, to the uh, work needed for measuring something is impossible. And actually this was discovered by Bennett in the 70s because Bennett found that it's not the measurement, it's something more complicated is that you measure and then you have to really complete the cycle, you have to erase the result of the measurement. 
And it's the combination of the measurement and the erasure what restores the second law of thermodynamics. And this is uh, the, the, the final, um, this is the answer that we are now trying to formalize, but uh, this is essentially the answer. So if you try to find a fundamental uh, inequality for the work needed to measure something, you will fail, because this depends on the Well, we will, we see in, in, we will see this in detail. This is, uh, oh. no, you, this is the, this is the, uh, oh my God, it's high tech. <laughs> So, uh, can we transfer to this? Because yeah. I forgot to plug it because the battery is not there. Okay, so. Um, some people is, com is com confused about the, um, uh, all, it's, it's true, what I, what, I, what I said is true that you will see in these days during the course, the effect of erasure and measurement and so on. But uh, the, it's true that uh, the, the first time that people see the Stellar engine, especially people that is, uh, experts like you are experts in the statistical mechanics and so on. Uh, uh, people feel a bit uncomfortable because uh, you have this particle like colliding and so on. I, I usually want to explain this. Um, uh, you can avoid these doubts uh, by uh, using many sealer engines. If you use many sealer engines, uh, like here, uh, you can uh, start with many sealer engines, insert the piston, you see that some of the particles get into the right, some on the left, some on the right, some on the left, etc., etc. Then you measure each of these guys and uh, you turn, ah, here. I have one animation, but it doesn't work. So, okay. Uh, what you have to do is to align all the particles on the left, for instance. So you have to turn this one, turn this one, turn this one, and then it, it connect all the pistons. And now you have an ideal gas here, macroscopic, except in a pressure with some fluctuations, but not so many. And then you can extract this work. So um, it's not, I mean, uh, this is just to tell you convince you that all these problems of the sealer engine that is a single particle and so on can be can be overcome I mean can be can be solved even even uh, more importantly at the end of this week you will learn that for the sealer engine you don't really need a single particle gas you can do it with many other systems for instance you can do it with a with a with a brownian particle you know brownian particles no I guess that uh, and they are they, they obey the Langevin equation. So you can have a Brownian particle in one well. This is a potential well. And if you follow this, pro, this protocol, this cycle, you extract, extract the KT log two. And the protocol is to create a double well and then lower the well where the particle is. So you need to measure. To complete this step, you need to measure. 
And the idea is that in any implementation of the Scylla engine, first you need some symmetry breaking, some kind of uh, two possibilities. Here is the piston, here is the well. Then you have to measure, and then you have to complete the cycle using the information gathered in the measurement. Um, I, I, I don't get like when you, you said people said at some point, okay, there is surely some cost to measurement and maybe the er erasure of measurement then. But I don't know why in the implementation we need to measure something about the piston. Yeah, you, uh, this is another question that people have. Why don't you just let the piston move and the piston will yeah, reveal? The piston the will reveal where the particle is. No, this is what your question or not? Uh, you say we need the measurement implement a reversible operation. So this is what I don't get. It's yeah, in the, in the gas is because, OK, uh, because you need, uh, you, could leave, you could leave the piston free, and then you have a free expansion. In a free expansion, if you remember, uh, you don't get any work. To get work, you have to uh, exert a pressure against the force exerted by the gas. And this is why you get the work. So for that, you need the measurement. Here, you need the measurement to know which, low, which well you low, lower down. But here, I mean, if you don't use the, you, you cannot, if you don't uh, exert the pressure, exactly this pressure, you cannot apply this formula. Because, uh, well, we, we, we write the work like that, but this is not the work. This is not the work. The work is P is the pressure exerted by the agent, which in a reversible expansion is equal to the pressure exerted by the gas, by definition. Yeah. But this is this type of subtleties in thermodynamics that are hard to learn. But uh, the work is the pressure exerted by the, piece, by the external agent. So to perform this uh, expansion, you need to exert a pressure and uh, otherwise, you don't get any work. In, 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 some, in some books, you, you will see this. You will see that um, the demo, uh, you know that the, it, this is going to move in this direction. So uh, you put here a rope and here uh, some weight. And then uh, you have to put it in the, you have to measure because otherwise you have to put the, the weight in the other. So when, when the particle is here, you need to put it in this way. So there are, uh, in the book by, uh, in the book by Lef and Rex, the Maxwell Demon book, you have all type of uh, ingenious uh, uh, mechanisms to, uh, and, and mechanisms that try to avoid the measurement, like you said, and it's impossible. Well, of course, yeah. What is a, rever a reversible expansion means that um, this is in thermodynamics is the same. If you uh, you have to exert the pressure uh, a little bit. Of smaller to get, uh, but then you have get, when you have a piston and you have two pressures, one in one side and the other, if they are different, you get the accelerated motion. And uh, if they are uh, equal, you don't get any motion. So reversible expansion is an idealization in thermodynamics that, that uh, uh, is, is, is uh, obtained in the limit when the two pressures are equal. But yeah, I, 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 I but this is, you have the same problem in thermodynamics uh, in, in normal gases. So uh, I admit that the, uh, I, I, I like this, this way of, exp of, 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 of telling the story because it is, you know that this is not essential. I, I, I understand that all this thing of the single molecule gas is, uh, is or, uh, or as you said, some people say, ah, in this first collision, the piston already moved, so you could use the piston as kind of a measurement device and so on. But, uh, but the truth is that 
this is something that we have learned now that uh, you don't need for the Silar engine, you don't need all this. Thing. You only need uh, 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 symmetry breaking so that the system chooses between right, left with priority one half. Then you have to measure, and then you can go back to the initial state by, uh, by uh, and in this process, you can get KT log 2. And actually, in this paper, this is a paper by, uh, that I wrote in 2001, uh, we found that it, it is not even necessary that the system is microscopic. You can have the same with macroscopic systems. And this is, for me, was a kind of a uh, revelation that, uh, uh, and in this paper, I showed that using a, 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 an easy model. And in an IC model, if you remember, if you have seen the IC model, it's the model of a ferromagnetic paramagnetic transition. You can uh, you can go from from no coupling between spins to some coupling between spins that align the spins, but then you have a phase transition. You have a symmetry breaking. So when you do that, the system can get magnetized upwards or downwards. Then you measure this quantity which is macroscopic quantity, and then you can recreate the, the, the Silar engine. I don't uh, you have the details in this paper. So it's not, uh, once you are convinced that uh, the Silar engine works, I mean, that, uh, the form, you, that you, can use, you can use this formula without any problem, you can use this formula, the Silar engine is much easier. This is why in the exercises, we have used the Silar engine, and, and the exercises are very simple, are just uh, modifications of the Silar engine. For instance, you have to, one modification is that maybe your demon is a little bit stupid or a little bit, uh, or is drunk or something, and there is an error, uh, there is a probability that, that, uh, that measures with some error. So that measures right when the particle is in the left, and the, this is the Silar engine with error, and you can, it's very easy to solve it using just this formula. This is your first exercises that you have. Uh. Okay, um, the easy model, and that's it. So, any questions? No, no, you go back, when you say that you go back, you have, a, it's like thermodynamic cycles. The cycle, you, in a thermodynamic cycle, you have some parameters, maybe pressure, maybe volume, maybe something, and means that you make some uh, process, and you go back to the same, uh, to the initial values of your parameters. But the microstate could be in. Yeah, sure. You can have, and you can, you can decrease the entropy of the universe. And people will say, "Oh my God!" But yeah, you can decrease. Uh, this is a, um, this is we know this now, and people knew it. Even people in the 19th century that observed the Brownian motion knew that we, because of fluctuations, and this is in fact a fluctuation. Uh, uh, you can get a decrease of entropy, or you can extract work from a single thermal bath. But you cannot do it systematically. To do it systematically, you need the measurement. But it's true. But, um, um. Sorry, I, I don't get why we, we need to know where the particle is at the beginning. Because if we put the, the bar always in the middle of the volume, then it would be natural that the particle pushes the bar towards the end anyway. 
Yeah, we it, already, uh, we, uh, uh, you need, but you need to exert the pressure. You need to oppose something to this motion. And to oppose this, you need the, the measurement. So and you could say, uh, we have, we, you could say, ah, but the, the piston itself is revealing the position of the particle. But this is not enough. And, and it's more clear here. For instance, here, if you, don't me if you don't measure, well, here is also the same. Because suppose that you don't measure. You have to exert the pressure. Uh, so you exert the pressure in this direction. If you are lucky, as we said, OK, you are extracting work. If you are unlucky and the particle is here, what you are doing is to compress. No, what you are, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, well. Mm. Yeah, if, uh, when, OK, uh, it's, uh, you have to exert this pressure to get the work out of the system. But Otherwise, can, you cannot uh, do it. Can the pressure be simply the, the weight, the mass of the bar that we put in the middle? The? The, the weight, the, the bar, the constraint given by, by the bar in the middle. I mean, that the particle has to push the bar and to oppose its resilience. The particle the does like that, so it, 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 uh, in each collision with the, with the piston, it gives energy to the piston, and you, the external agent, the, uh, agent some, somehow must to extract this energy. But it's true, as I said, if you have problems with the ones with the single molecule sealer engine, forget about it. Think of this one. This is much simpler. And uh, uh, here, uh, it's true that if you if you don't measure and you low you lower this weight. Then you lose uh, um, uh, you lose a lot of uh, uh, I mean you don't get you don't extract the KT log two and or, or think of this one but this is more complicated so uh, if you have any problem with the sealer engine just forget about the sealer engine because it is not um, the the physical details are not important in the sealer engine but it's true that many people have tried to do what you said and actually. It's a, pro it's a pity that it doesn't work the simulation, but um, I mean the animation. But can you imagine here, why do you need to measure? Because you need to turn this once, this and this and this, to, ex to exert uh, 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 the, the pressure in the same direction. So in this case, it's more clear. In this case, I admit that I have the same doubts that you have. At the beginning, when I read the sealer engine, I said, my god, this is so stupid. I mean, the piston already moves, and so on. All the questions that you are raising now is the questions that a normal person, <laughs> Matteo and everybody that has studied the sealer engine thinks. I mean, but, but you think of that like, uh, like um, uh, you see that, uh, that you need to measure it. You, actually, now I have a question. I have a problem. I have to solve, but uh, uh, in, in the exercises, for instance, you are going to do the following. Um, you, are going to, you are going to apply this formula all the time. But forget about pressures and so on. You, you will get, you, you, you apply this formula. And then uh, what happens if you, if you are wrong? For instance, if you, you think that the particle is here, but actually is here, that you compress. You move like that, and you compress the piece. This is actually a different protocol. When I said, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to uh, make uh, uh, things more complicated. Uh, think just that you move the piston. You can move the piston by controlling the pressure or by controlling the velocity. This is another possibility. And actually, this is probably much easier. Uh, you can have a protocol that you move this at a certain speed very slow speed because it's reversible. And then you can extract also the work. But if you move in the wrong direction, you compress. And then the work becomes negative, the extracted work. This is what you are going to do in the exercise. But, uh, but, uh, but um, yeah, I, uh, I understand all these questions. But uh, 
I can tell you, the, we could discuss for days on the C-Larini, but the, the, the physical details are not important. Sorry? I can't hear. No, the work, he's asking if the work, he's asking if the work modifies the entropy of the universe. Well, by definition, and we could, um, uh, tomorrow, uh, on Wednesday, we will study this in thermodynamics. By definition, um, not by definition, I mean, an exter what is an external agent? An external agent is uh, somebody or uh, machine or whatever that modifies a parameter of the Hamiltonian of the system, like a field or, uh, or um, in the case of the Carnot cycle is the volume and uh, what else, and the temperature. So, uh, well, the temperature is not a parameter of the Hamiltonian, but anyway, um, the uh, external agent is somebody who changes a parameter in the Hamiltonian. In principle, this can be done without any entropy change. The external agent can do that with constant entropy, and uh, so there is no uh, change of entropy in the agent. And this is what we call work. Work, by definition, work is any transfer of energy between a system and the rest of the world that doesn't change the entropy of the rest of the world. This is, maybe this is not the definition that you, you have been given in the school, but uh, heat is some, is heat is any exchange of energy that changes the entropy of the rest of the world. And the most, the simplest case is the energy transfer between a heat bath and a, and a, and a system. And then the change of entropy in the bath is Q divided by T. But by definition, and this is the modern definition of heat and work, because heat and work are things that are not so easy to define. And uh, one of the problems of thermodynamics is that uh, it starts with definitions of heat and work, which are mechanical and are uh, particular of certain situations. But if you start to think of nanosystems and so on, the, the typical definitions of heat and work that you find in the textbooks are not are useless. So heat is any exchange of energy that modifies the entropy of the rest of the world. Work is any exchange of energy that doesn't uh, that is not accompanied by any change of entropy in the rest of the world. Okay. Anyway, let's see. So I would uh, like to ask you so. What is the role of time here? Let's say when you introduce the protocol, when you change the Here, everything is quasi-static. Eh? Of course, in thermodynamics, you have, um, you have the problem. Of, you have equilibrium thermodynamics, where everything is quasi-static. And this is important because it allows you to, to, to assume or to uh, that the state of the system at any stage of your process is at equilibrium. So, uh, and if you have uh, finite speed protocols, you have what it is called finite time thermodynamics, which is very interesting, which is, uh, but it's more complicated. And here, in the in, in thermodynamics of information, we start with also reversible, I mean, quasi-static processes. You have also papers doing finite time information thermodynamics, which is what happens if all these things are done in finite time or finite speed, non-zero speed. But here, uh, we are only working with reversible processes. Thank you. And this is the, OK. So, Cedar Engine, 1922, uh, and things uh, people were working on the entropy cost of measurement and so on. 
until 1970, where Landauer found something which is kind of trivial, but uh, it was a revolution in this business of not only on the Maxwell demon, but also on the uh, thermodynamic consequences of information processing. And he found the following, that uh, some, uh, some um, operations in, in, in a computer, for instance, or in information processing uh, uh, devices, uh, they have some fundamental thermodynamic uh, requirements or limitations. Uh, and the example that he uh, showed was this process, which is called restore to zero. So imagine that you have a computer, or you have a, let's say, uh, a memory. It's, it's better to think of a hard drive because computers store uh, uh, bits in using currents, so they are not in equilibrium. But suppose a, 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 a device that stores a bit, it stores information in equilibrium, and it is in equilibrium at a given temperature T. So um, your system has a lot of microstates, of course, it's a mesos maybe a macroscopic system or a mesoscopic system, but well, people is trying to do now memories with a single, single atom memories, but uh, we are still a bit far from that. So you have your, your your system is a physical system. So it will have microstates. And uh, you know how it's called the, the set of all the microstates of a system? Phase space, no? The phase space. It's, we call it phase space. So uh, my, the memory, the simplest model of a memory, well, the simplest, the universal model of a memory, I would say, is a system uh, whose phase space, this is the phase space of the system, is split into two regions, zero and one. We call it symmetric memory when these two regions have the same volume in phase space. The volume in phase space plays a very important role. It's related with the entropy, the Boltzmann entropy. So uh, now suppose that this memory, you, you, you uh, do, I, I, I like to call this overwriting because it's when you have a hard drive and you uh, erasing could be, People call this eraser, but uh, I, I prefer to call this overwriting in the sense that you write a zero, independently of what is the, the, the initial state. So if you write a zero in your hard drive, it doesn't matter what is the initial state, it goes to zero. So by this color, I mean that all this blue, uh, of course, we are uh, doing this for a single system, but uh, you can think that you repeat it, or you have an ensemble of systems, or you repeat, the system, the, you repeat it very uh, many times. In the initial condition could be zero and one, and the final is zero. So in phase space, this means that there is a, a, a shrinkage of the volume. So before uh, your systems occupy this, your ensemble of systems, or could uh, be in any point of the micros of the, of the phase space, and then uh, the, the only phase space available after the process is zero. So um, either using the second law, here we are using the second law. Here you are using the second law, or the Liouville theorem, which is less, uh, more fundamental, well, more fundamental. Liouville theorem is a theorem, I mean, it's a theorem. Any Hamiltonian dynamics, uh, Liouville, uh, uh, who knows the Liouville theorem? Nobody. Ah. Well, Liouville theory tells you that if you have the phase space and you have a set and you have a Hamiltonian dynamic, the volume of that set is constant. So this means that you cannot have this. For instance, you cannot have this with just an external agent. You need something else. You need a, you need a thermal bath. Because you have to compensate this shrinkage uh, by an increase of phase space volume in the surroundings. You can interpret this in two ways, as, as Liouville's theorem, because uh, if I cannot de decrease, in a completely Hamiltonian dynamics, I cannot decrease the volume, so 
in this case, if I decrease the volume that these guys occupy, then I have to increase the volume uh, elsewhere, in this case, in the, in, the, in, the, in the surroundings. Or I can use the second law. This is Boltzmann entropy. I'm decreasing the Boltzmann entropy, so I have to increase the entropy of the surroundings. And the only way to increase the, the entropy of the surroundings is to connect this to a bath and to uh, dissipate heat to the bath. How much heat should I dissipate? K till of two. Because the, the decrease of, ent of entropy of, of volume is here, is, is a factor two. The, the entropy is, is log of the, of the with, with the Lee Will theorem, it's more difficult, but you can do the same calculation with the Lee Will theorem. You have to, 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 uh, to, uh, to um, dissipate K T log 2. So uh, this is interesting that uh, to do something, something as simple as overwriting in a hard drive, that could be, so if you have your hard drive and, and, and you say uh, erase it in the, the strong eraser in the, which is, makes zero all the disk, you have to dissipate kT log two per bit that you erase. Uh, and this is a fundamental bound. This is the important thing in all these things, of course. Everything depends on the technology and so on, but this is a fundamental bound. If you, you, can, you could never, go below this. You need this work, and you need to dissipate. This is, of course, we are far from here. People is always, uh, people put the um, things like the Moore's Law, so how, how, oops, uh, sorry, no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> how, how much uh, people is uh, thinking how far we are from the Landauer bound. This is called the Landauer's principle. So, but uh, people think that at some point we will reach this Landauer bound. So uh, yeah. there are even proposals of how to change the processing of information because this is called logically irreversible. This is called logically irreversible. That you cannot go back from this to this. So uh, in a logical irreversible process, you have to dissipate energy. Uh, by the way, uh, the, this is, there is a lot of confusion with the Landauer principle. I mean, if you go to the literature, there are people who really, uh, there, there are articles completely wrong. I mean, an article, not, not even wrong, articles that the only thing that they do is to add some confusion to the whole thing. Because, uh, for instance, people, some people uh, um, say, ah, uh, Landauer principle says that you need to dissipate k t log 2 to erase information. This is not true. I can erase information by, uh, here you have a kind of barrier that, you have a kind of barrier, or, or in a, suppose, suppose the, 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 the simplest model of a memory which is a Brownian particle in, in a double world potential. And this is zero and this is one. You can, you can just lower the barrier, raise the barrier. Then you have, you have um, a raise because the particle is here at the beginning, but at the end can be anywhere. This is not restored to zero. This is a racer. And you can do it with zero dissipation. This can be done with zero dissipation. So uh, don't think that a racer is the the, the, the important thing here is restore to zero or overwriting. Yeah? Also, another confusion in the Landauer principle is that people think that logical irreversibility, remember, logical irreversibility means that from the output, you, you cannot recover the input. The typical thing of a particle of a non one to one function is uh, uh, logical irreversibility means that the function on this is a Boolean function that uh, maps from zeros and ones to zeros and ones. And this is, a, this is logically irreversible, but it's thermodynamically reversible. Precisely, the, 
the Landauer heat that is dissipated is to make the entropy of the universe constant. But, um, so the entropy of the universe here is constant. Yeah? So it's reversible. Logical irreversibility does not mean thermodynamic irreversibility. Logical irreversibility means that you have heat dissipation. Okay. Well, you have some. You have two exercises, I think, no, Leah, on that, on the, on the, to to see more in detail this. So we are going to finish. But um, what is Bennett's solution? This is. A, well, I will I will explain it here. Well, what, what is Bennett's solution? Uh, remember the Szilard engine, no? In the Szilard engine, we have to measure, then we operate. So Bennett was in the office in the same corridor as Prof. Landauer in IBM. And then, uh, I guess they talk about this. And then uh, when Bennett, well, I'm recreating the story. But when Bennett saw this, then he said, uh, Okay, this can be applied to the demo, to the Maxwell demo. So I have the Szilard engine, I have my demo. The demo has a memory. So the demo, mm, uh, origi originally, for instance, is in zero. And uh, then the demo measures. Okay, we, re we complete the cycle in the Szilard engine, but the uh, cycle is not completed because the demo has. Now, in his mind, uh, the result of the measurement. So now has to go back to the initial state. So has to erase this information. And then, by erasing this information, he has to dissipate KT log 2, which compensates the KT log 2 that he extracted. And now everything is fine. So uh, Bennett, what Bennett saw is that Landauer's principle restores the second law in the whole story. So the thermodynamic cost is not in the measurement. It's in the ratio of the information. So you can measure with zero entropy production or zero entropy, zero dissipation, or zero work. But you, have, you need to exert work to do that. states, we just need to restore the thermodynamic. But this is macroscopic. Microscopic means the, the, the microscopic state. But you need, the demon needs to, I mean, to start again, uh, to start again, well, you could start from here as well. In this, but this is not a complete cycle. OK? So you should, you should go back to. Uh, this is, this is not um, a microscopic state. The microscopic states are these points here. This is a macroscopic. If you want the, the well, we will see this in, 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 in our classes that uh, this is called the informational state, and the informational state is macroscopic, so you have to go back. Uh. So, but because you said you said that people usually make a mistake and they think that this that you drew is uh, erasure, but this is not erasure because here you don't go to you don't reduce the phase space. You just yeah. When you you can do this, um, uh, you can go like that and then go like that and then you don't know where it is. This is erasing information, but it has can be done without. Landauer's principle does not apply to that. But then you need to go, in the case of the demon, you need to go to the same mesoscopic state. Well, we will see this okay. in, uh, let me finish just, uh, well, uh, another uh, error in Bennett's solution that people has, Bennett, not, Bessen, Bennett had this very clear, and, and tells this very clear in his papers, is that uh, he found a possibility that the erasure is in the that the the compensation of KT log two is in the in the erasure, but you could have combinations. You can you can split this in KT log two 
this work, KT log 2, that compensates the exact work. You can split it in measurement or eraser or, or uh, um, the thermodynamic cost could be due to eraser and to measurement. And there are some papers, old papers, showing that this can be, depending, depending on how the memory of the demo uh, is. Okay, uh, I think for the exercises that you have to do, it, it's okay what we have already shown. You have a couple of exercises on the, on the SILA engine. It's, 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 this is just the introduction, but most of the things that we are going to do in, the rest, in, the, in, the, in these two weeks are here. <laughs> I mean, here, the, the problems are the problems that the SILA engine uh, rises. So, so, it is a, so this is why you have a lot of exercises just to, to work with the SILA engine, the Landauer principle, and so on. Uh, and just to finish, um, there are some experimental realizations. This is one that uh, uh, we did uh, uh, with uh, the, gr uh, the group of, uh, of uh, in, at ICFO, uh, with a group of uh, Petrov, Dimitri Petrov, and Edgar Roland, who maybe some of you know, he's here in ICDP. He was involved, he was doing experiments. <laughs> He's a, he's a theoretician, but uh, he, he was in the lab as well in, at that time. And uh, this is more or less the Brownian particle that splits into two. This, uh, these are uh, optical traps. By, by separating two optical traps, we could um, uh, force the system to, to adopt one of the two decisions. As I said before, the only important ingredient in the Cedar engine is that this symmetry breaking, so you force the system to adopt a binary decision with probability one half, one half. This is also uh, uh, by Yuka Pecola, the group of Yuka Pecola and Helsinki with, with single electron boxes, and, and the electron can be, it's is, is a kind of quantum dot that can be filled or empty. You have these two possibilities as well. And this is by uh, uh, Takahiro Sagawa was here. This is, this, is, this is a bit different. This is just a, you can make a very simple Maxwell demon. If you have a Brownian particle in the gravitational field, you can just wait until the, you know that the Brownian particle tends to go down, but sometimes via fluctuations goes up. So every time it goes up, you put some wall, and then you, and the particle is gaining energy, and this is the kind of Maxwell demon because you need to, this is more related with the original Maxwell Dean. Okay, so um, that's it. Um, the course will be just the, uh, the theoretical framework to deal with these uh, problems of how the information that I have about a system allows me to to defeat the second law, this is essential. But, uh, but we will, uh, this is something that I like to do always uh, when, we, when, I show, when I teach thermodynamics of information. There are two different tasks, very, very, uh, and it's, it's good that you separate it, these two tasks. The first task is to, to, to uh, reformulate the second law or to, to, um, to, um, uh, in, to incorporate the information into the second law. So now the second law doesn't work because I can extract KT log 2. So how, how I can incorporate information? And essentially the answer is the Silar engine. Is for each bit of information, I can take KT log 2. This is, but we will generalize this. And there are uh, interesting problems on that. So here you don't care to restore the second law or something. Here you just want to make a thermodynamics that incorporates information. And there, is a lot of, there are a lot of problems, interesting problems here. For instance, how to, create, how to use information in an optimal way and things like that. And the second, which is more uh, fundamental, more philosophical, or more uh, affects the foundations of physics is, well, uh, can we really defeat the second law or can we, or, 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 we, 
or, or can we restore the validity of the second law? Of course, the answer is this one. We, we will restore the validity of the second law. How? Well, like, like Landauer and Beret did, by uh, taking into account the physical nature of the demo. And we, de we will do de this in 4, 6, and 7 to 10 will be more the second part of that. And uh, this is enough for today. Uh, good question, Mateo. <laughs> Ask the organizer. <laughs> you will figure out. I will. No, I think, okay, uh, um, I think uh, thermodynamic information is an important part of, st of statistical mechanics. So in this way, it is, uh, it is uh, many tools that we will teach tomorrow on, on Wednesday, which are uh, stochastic thermodynamics and uh, information theory. These are used in complex systems in a regular, in a regular way. I must admit that in, in, in this curse, in the Silar engine and so on, we are interested in the energy exchange between the system and the surroundings and so on. And this is not so important for complex systems. Although there are people trying to do the energetic cost of, of machine learning and things like that. So in principle, it's a, it's a research line that could be important. But we will, you will learn tools which are really important for uh, information theory and stochastic thermodynamics are really important for, for complex systems. Lunch? Okay. Okay. So I have to, I have to, I don't have cup of coupons, no? I have to pay the, the lunch? Ah, uh, the lunch, yes. yes. I have to buy everything and then you, and, uh, you Yes. I'll have to